All right, we're back. Um, we're going to do some this differentiation. Uh, so the book has some really ridiculous functions, um, like this one, sine of x plus sine of y equals sine of x, y. Now, if you solve for y here, you will get, well, you will get a lot of different answers. But for example, you somehow you should get this curve, which looks like the graph of a function, but this is a pretty crazy thing because um, I'll use the amount of stuff looking like this. Uh, and this is like, the computer doesn't know which bits to connect here. I'm pretty sure it's just confused and it thinks it's confused. Um, Notice the also there's like holes, um, and I would be I would be really impressed if someone tells me why those holes are there. Anyway, um, I am willing to bet money that solving this equation for y is legitimately impossible to to just give a formula for y, but still we can find the derivative. We can find the the slope here, which really looks like it's negative one, and we can find the slope here. This is zero pi. Uh, you plug in x equals zero and y equals pi, everything becomes zero. What does this look like here? Like negative two, one thing. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, So this is our equation. Um, sorry, my axis and my y look kind of tough. Oh. Um, so we're trying to find trying to find a formula for the x with respect to y and then Try to plug in zero, zero and zero pi. Okay, so there's two options here. There's solving and then taking the derivative. I have no idea how to do that. So if you do, you know, leave a comment. And the other option is to take that equation and do implicit differentiation, which is what I'm gonna do since it's the only thing I know. Um, that I can try right now. Even if I could do the other thing, this is just easier. So implicit differentiation involves two things. Um, taking an equation and taking the derivative. And remember the, remember the chain rule. If you forget the chain rule, everything, everything goes south and you cry. That's step one. And step two is solving for um, the derivative that I'm trying to find. That it's going to pop up because I'm going to do the chain rule correctly. So let's do it. Um, the derivative of sine x respect to x. I know what that's going to be. The derivative of sine y uh, respect to x. I know what that's going to be too, and it's not going to be cosine y. So the derivative of sine xy dx. All right, let's start with the easy one. Um, derivative of derivative of sine of x respect to x is cosine of x. Now here, um, there's a y there, and I'm taking derivative with respect to x, and that's not going to work unless everything in the function is x, is, otherwise, what is the relation between y and x? I have no idea um, because I don't know how to solve this equation. So I have to use the chain rule, which means take the derivative of the outside respect to the inside and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. And here it's more of the same. There's x's, but there's also y's. So 
I am equally, um, sorry, I'm, I need to take the derivative with respect to the inside. Okay, so there's a cosine there that I don't have to do anything with. And now derivative of cosine of y with respect to y, that, that's easy, it's just cosine. Derivative of sine is cosine. And dy dx, uh, I don't need to do anything with that because I don't know what it is. That's just, that's what I'm supposed to solve for it later. So that's just gonna stay there. Now, derivative of sine of anything respect to anything is cosine of anything. Uh, cosine. Uh, and now derivative of the product of x times y respect to x. Well, I just said derivative of the product. So I'm gonna have to use the product rule, which means take the derivative of one, multiply by the other, and then take the derivative of the other and multiply by one. And the derivative of x respect to x is one. It looks like a fraction. It looks like it canceled the fraction, but it really didn't. I swear I didn't. Um, and the derivative of y respect to x is again something. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So, um, well, I'm done with step one. Now I need to solve for dy dx. Um, that's what I'm gonna do next. Um, so it's always gonna be just multiplying stuff and then add up with other stuff. So it's not gonna be like, you're never gonna see dy dx in a square or in a sign or an exponential or a logarithm, if you, if you see any of those, uh, something's got really bad. So really all you need to do is take the, the terms that are added together with dy's dx's, put them on one side, take the other terms, put them on the other, and then divide by whatever is in the way. But before I do that, I'm going to distribute these brackets out. Uh, which gives me multiply cosine x, y by everything. So, so now it looks like what I said, there's stuff that has no dy dx and there's stuff that is just multiplied by dy dx. And I'm gonna put one of those on one side and the other sort on the other. Of course, when something is adding to get it to the other side, you need to subtract by it. And, and now what I, what I promised before, just take a common factor of dy dx and divide by whatever is left multiplying it. So dy dx, dividing that out is cosine of x minus y cosine xy divided by, by the, this thing, which I just divided out, x cosine x minus cosine y. All right, hopefully I didn't mess it up. I'm gonna check in the graph. Um, so if x, uh, if, if x and y are zero, then the cosine, cosine of zero is one and zero times anything is zero. And here cosine of zero is still one, so, which gives me negative one, which definitely looks right based on the graph I saw before. And if x is zero and y is pi, then what am I looking at? I'm looking at um, cosine of zero, which I, I just said it's one. Cosine of zero is one minus 
pi cosine of zero, which is one divided by zero times anything is zero, and then I have cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative one. Um, Pi is 180 degrees, which means half a turn. And this point is negative one zero. This is cosine of pi, and this is sine of pi. And also, if you graph cosine, that's not cosine. What am I doing? Cosine starts at one and goes down, repeats every two pi. And after half of that, it's then half the have the spin around, which means it's at the lowest point since it started at the highest point, which um, means that the cosine is negative one. So cosine of pi is negative one, which means that there's a minus here, which makes this positive one. So this is one minus pi um, divided by one. All right, so let, let's see. Uh, see if I messed it up. So um, what, I, what I said, let's write it down. The computation said that the slope at zero, zero is negative one. And we also got that the slope at zero pi is um pi minus one one minus pi sorry what we just got so um what is the line so the line through zero 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 with slope negative one is uh, this equation. In fact, I mean, I could just, this one is fantastic. I can just go, oh, no, I guess I can't do that. Um, I could just make all of these letters. Um, the line through AB is, y minus the a value equals x minus the uh, x value times the slope. And if I said the slope is negative one and a and b are zero, that is, uh, that is the line I was, I was trying to see. So um, it, it looks hella tangent. I think we won. I think we got the tangent line. I think we did a fantastic job. I still have no idea what formula this function has. Um, it looks, well, I mean, this piece that I'm looking at looks like kind of like a, a wave that gets shorter and shorter. It's just surrounded by crazy stuff. Um, but I know that the, um, I know the slope there is negative one and this is negative pi and I could just plug in and find the slope. And if you gave me, if I got these points with enough decimals, um, I could also what is this negative 1.8 plug those in and figure out the slope. Uh, Just put the point in there. Um, just plug that into the equation and you're gonna get the slope. Actually, let's just do it. Let's just, let's just do it. Uh, the slope. I call, I don't know, L for line. The slope is, I said the cosine of X. Uh, minus y cosine. <laughs> oh my god. Of cosine of xy divided by 
and cosine of x, x is r minus y cosine of xy divided by x times the cosine of x minus the cosine of y. That's uh, that's the formula we just got. So Probably wrong. Did probably wrong. Um, this stuff does not look like one. Let me check. <laughs> and here's where it went wrong. Um, I had <clears throat> uh, cosine of xy here. And here, I just completely forgot that I had a cosine of xy. So uh, there's a cosine of xy. Oh, not there. Ooh. Oh. There's a cosine of xy here, which makes this response to here. And then I divide it, which means that I missed this y. Lucky for me, I was making x equals zero. So nothing changed here and here. Um, all right. Honestly, if you, if you did that, if you did a problem like this and you made that mistake, or you just copied something wrong, you get all the points um, because obviously I understand that that can happen. It's one thing to um, it's one thing to copy something wrong, and another thing to forget the rules of exponents. All right. So what I was saying is, if you move the points here you get something that looks very reasonable for the slope. And actually, I can I can take this point, x and y, put that into the, I have, I have the coordinates of the point and I have the slope and it's stopping me from drawing the line. And it sure does look tangent. Uh, if I manage to put the blue dot on the curve, wherever I go, it looks tangent. For example, I can make r equals zero and s equals pi, and that makes it the tangent. And if I put it here, it looks tangent. If I put it here, it looks tangent. Um, everywhere it looks tangent. Even, oh, here it goes really insane. Uh, so there you go, that's it. We the derivative um, and they're all the same they're all i mean really if you know how to do the derivatives and you don't forget to do the chain rule you know how to do this all right have a good weekend <laughs>